field C CTO and uh, co-founder at Ivan. And today I'm gonna share some of our findings of the common challenges with running stateful systems, and namely databases and data management systems in the cloud. I also hope to share uh, some insights and, and, and perhaps tips on how, how do we approach these problems and, and something that hopefully you'll be able to learn a bit. So let's start. Uh, just a quick intro to Ivan. Uh, we, we are a, a provider for managed open source data management technologies on public cloud. Uh, through our services, we help developers to be productive and allow uh, the developers to focus on, on creating applications and um, uh, meet uh, the, the fast-paced and uh, data-driven uh, business of today. We currently offer a suite of 11 uh, open source technologies on, on, in the data management space uh, and, and we really want to cover uh, the different, uh, say, requirements with these uh, technologies. So uh, offer the best, best tool in each category. Um, Ivan was built uh, because as uh, developers uh, of the founding team uh, or developers ourselves, we really wanted to create a platform that we would have loved to exist uh, at the time. We spent a lot of our time in our earlier projects in, in uh, getting started with uh, building the data infrastructure and, 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 and setting that up. And uh, that was time away until we got, could get to the actual business challenges. We used a lot of uh, open source in the past and really really wanted to um, ensure that everyone would have access to these technologies. Technologies that we loved and technologies that we, we uh, think can make a difference with a minimum um, required expertise or investment. We're all about helping developers to offload overhead and really uh, focus on turning great ideas into application. Um, as easy as possible. We are firm believers in DevOps and we see both open source and cloud as, as critical enablers for, uh, for uh, DevOps practices to be successful. Maybe just to give a, a little indication on Ivan scale. So we at the moment we operate about 50,000 service instances on behalf of our customers and, and implement these uh, on a roughly 80,000 virtual machines across several uh, cloud providers. Um, but to get to the actual topic of this presentation, let's take a look at some of the challenges that uh, we see are, are uh, critical with running stateful system and uh, running stateful, especially in, in the cloud. Um, the first one I'll mention is, is just keeping up with the software releases. Um, we too often see software that is out of date in terms of the latest software patches or it might be out of date with the versions, uh, major versions that uh, are supported by the projects that are actually getting those software patches uh, against the uh, published vulnerabilities. And in many cases, this, is, this also means that if, if the software is out of date, you're missing out on a, a lot of new features, a lot of new functionality and a lot of bug fixes. And we see that this is fairly natural, uh, but the problem nevertheless, it's there's, there's often this don't touch it until it's broken uh, or unless it's broken a mentality. But uh, we feel that it's really, really critical to address uh, these uh, items before they uh, become a true problem. Uh, the second challenge uh, we c quite often see is uh, a lack or, of or inadequate monitoring on these systems. And, and this is uh, equally important for all parts of the software stack, but specifically crucial for uh, stateful and uh, data management systems. Uh, these systems, they tend to work quite fine until they don't, if, until the load grows over some specific threshold or, or uh, uh, the, the, the volumes of the data grow uh, beyond uh, anticipated. And then it, the, the failure modes can be just the entire collapse of, of the systems or unavailability uh, in that space. So monitoring for both availability and, and, and function as well as, as uh, performance trends and, and making automatic alerts on uh, any deviations uh, of that expected performance is, is really important. Um, also, we would kind of want to highlight, do pay attention to uh, 
uh, logs also for errors or except exceptions um, and they are or can be really good forward indicators for any upcoming problems so uh, even if logs are quite sometimes quite noisy there's a lot of uh, especially out of expectation conditions that uh, is really valuable to build, uh, valuable to capture and this might be a good recommendation for for uh, upstream open source contributions in this space cleaning up logs for those pro uh, projects and making making them even more uh, relevant and easier to follow um, and while stateful uh, stateless applications can usually just be uh, restarted or redeployed on crash stateful systems and, and data management systems they must cope with these types of failures in a manner that uh, uh, retains availability but also integrity of the data and faults faults come in many many uh, different forms so we've seen anything from a common case of uh, losing virtual machine or or uh, into all kinds of different network uh, faults on either uh, virtual machine level or uh, network level uh, storage system look up, uh, lock ups or all kinds of weird word issue uh, on that one and we've seen everything from single instance level to availability zones but every now and then uh, we see a full region outages as well and I I can't but emphasize that the overall cloud stability has made uh, made uh, great strides uh, over the years so um, this is not as much of a, a, a problem anymore but um, just to share an example, um, Meltdown, Spectre, the, the uh, speculative uh, execution vulnerabilities. We saw a lot of uh, full availability zone instance resets or failures at, at the time. And perhaps uh, indicating that the, the virtual machine migration from the cloud providers wasn't as perfect as, as we expected. And it got to the point where we could see uh, across multiple pro providers uh, a lot of failures and we could almost anticip anticipate that uh, there would be a new vulnerability published in the next next two weeks so it's crucial to at least understand the risk appetite and have a have a have a plan on how to recover from faults on uh, availability zone level but also perhaps even region level uh, going forward um, one more problem uh, we are seeing is is a general over provision of data management uh, technologies and and th this is something kind of uh, i i guess it goes back to the don't touch it un unless it's broken but we see that uh, this is both wasteful but also this is perhaps pushing problems until later uh, when they become a true problems so uh, there will be always a point when when what we have provisioned uh, will be uh, inadequate for the increased load or increased uh, velocity number of requests or volumes amount of raw data that we need to handle and process so just don't push this uh, efforts uh, for too long um, we find this actually that this goes hand in, well hand in hand with managing failures so uh, more on that in a bit and last but not least um, for given our background with uh, databases I just can't uh, skip this one uh, mostly related to perhaps transactional database we, we've seen too many cases where where a fault led to the need of restoring uh, the data from uh, backups only to realize that uh, the backups were not even or not either taken on schedule or or they had some problems so that the, the they were broken uh, in content and, and the uh, backups couldn't be uh, restored as expected and we've seen in many cases where someone uh, kind of for a reason operator maybe disables backups temporarily uh, to overcome a, a resource constraint uh, issue but then no money nobody uh, remembers to follow up and only when the fault happens we discover that there was no monitoring in place for these backups uh, happening for example so please make sure that your backup strategy also includes monitoring of, of that the backup backup are backups are taken as scheduled but also that there is uh, uh, 
frequent testing, ensuring the integrity of the backups and avail ability to restore uh, them uh, when needed. All right, let's take a look at some of the ways we approach these problems. Uh, First item on our list is everything as a code. This is kind of extension to infra as a code, but um, uh, we approach all of our operations, all of our Ivan business as a, as a as a kind of a software problem. Uh, we push all aspects of the deployment upgrades as well as all the uh, uh, tooling that our operators use to 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 uh, manage, uh, say, or inspect. Uh, our customer services or wh whatever information they, they need. We push all of that through our software development process, including version control and, and CI, CD pipelines. And uh, we want to also include all parts, it, cloud account preparation, starting from all network creation, all uh, even access authorization. And it takes a bit of effort to get started with the habit but the, the payouts are really great so uh, running everything through version control ensures that we have actual record on what was done and we can ensure that all the deployments are repeatable and tested and now we have a reference we can compare the actual state and, and check if there are any deviations uh, either through say a manual operation or, or or a fix well intended or just uh, um, uh, uh, a well, kind of a proper operator fix for an urgent or uh, acute issue or whether this actually unauthorized change and it acts as a documentation as well um, we have a good confidence on our disaster recovery capability because it's tested as part of our uh, CICD pipeline on an ongoing basis. And uh, the account authorization, that has been a, 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 a great because it allows us then, then we have a documentation of all the grants, all the, uh, all the changes that happen to it and, and also that we can then verify that indeed only the access that has been authorized is in place. And this is a flywheel. So um, our operator tooling has now grown to over 1,000 subcommands um, from gaining information on a specific customer service uh, uh, statistics or, or performance to to all kinds. So when when there's a kind of little bit of scaffolding there, uh, a lot of things uh, start to improve on their own. Automating everything, uh, extending on, on the previous topic, we spent a significant amount of effort in automating our deployments, uh, upgrades and our operations. And what has really enabled us to scale has been uh, automating responses based on uh, active monitoring of the, of, the, of, the, of the applications that we run or data management systems that we run um, and monitoring metrics and logs and creating automatic responses to uh, things that could fail. Apache Kafka, for example, the, the brokers tend to get their internal state a little bit mixed uh, uh, from time to time and they just require the process to be restarted to recover. And this effort is, is obvious from the man monitoring and logs, uh, even if it doesn't necessarily uh, trigger a full uh, outage of that broker and the broker continues to serve uh, clients in a little bit reduced state. And the uh, flywheel I mentioned earlier, it's apparent here as well. So when the uh, DevOps and the SRE team get get into the habit of reducing their own paging alerts by, by automating those responses and automating those um, reactions, uh, one quickly starts to gather quite a, quite a collection or quite a library of automa automations that take care of uh, the daily and recurring uh, tasks. Um, here I just want to make a, a, a push or pitch for a couple of technologies that we used and how work really well. So we use Apache Kafka ourselves uh, to trunk all of our signaling traffic, all telemetry and all of logs. On a, on a fleet of our VMs, we pump all, all metrics uh, using Telegraph and full copy of uh, 
uh, journal D logs using journal D components. So, uh, and thus we can pipe all these uh, metrics into M3 time series database and use Grafana dashboards and, and alerting automatically based on that uh, data. And the log stream, we push it both to open search for uh, dashboards and for exploration or troubleshooting, but we also pipe it through a uh, log inspecting uh, pipeline that uh, then can trigger on some conditions or, or enrich telemetry for, for our alerting purposes. This is, has been a huge benefit uh, for our operations. Um, very much like Kubernetes, all of our all of Ivan is based on converging operations. We have a declaration or a specification on how customer service should look like, and then automation that uh, monitors the actual state versus uh, that uh, declaration and schedules corrective actions. And uh, this is really important. This uh, the imperative or or the, the task scheduling model. Uh, they might encounter transient errors. Maybe there's a failure to provision a cloud resource that is temporary, or uh, there are some temporary uh, transient network issues, and or a worker might crash on task if it returns a, or gets an error code that it doesn't recognize, or or some other ex exception that is uh, not on on the uh, tested hot code code path. And converging model on uh, on in the contrary doesn't really care. So while while we are kind of rescheduling these operations based on deviations from the declared state, we will keep on retrying these operations until the state uh, uh, starts to match much what what was desired. So very po powerful approach in managing stateful systems in the cloud. Um, as mentioned in uh, the challenges earlier, coping with range of failures is crucial for ensuring availability and, and data in, in, uh, integrity with uh, stateful systems. So we've, we've spent a lot of uh, our investment around that capability and that uh, or managing that failure, um, continue to test it, all kinds of different scenarios, all kinds of uh, responses, something that we can really trust and uh, we can operate on, on a uh, on, a, on a good basis. But going beyond that, we have actually decided to use the exact same code path for other uh, parts, positive setup stages as well. So doing setup, doing software updates, doing scaling operations. Um, so the, this is in addition to kind of the say negative cases, the, the, the recovering from faults. And this gives us one flow to perfect and one flow to test and one one that is continuously tested and verified in production as well. We're still working on improving this on say considering performance degradations and as full failures and re, uh, reacting accordingly so maybe replacing underlying uh, VMs if we see uh, performance degradation maybe on the storage layer or uh, noisy neighbor, neighbor neighbor problem but the same models we are uh, confident that we can utilize for these purposes as well other side of the coin we're using a lot of failure injection as part of our testing as well and and uh, in some cases all in our production as well and for us this means either meddling with network connectivity inducing all kinds of storage system failures or or tearing down virtual machines. Um, I can't but say a strong recommendation for everyone to utilize these practices. Maybe it's using on or running on spot instances in the cloud or something that forces you to cope with a lot of failures and a lot of errors um, up front. And, and slash these bugs uh, in an automated way or slashing this bug in our automation so that uh, we can really build that resilience and we can re really trust our uh, vault recovery systems going forward. And last but not least, immutable infrastructure. We believe very much in immutable infrastructure concept. Due to our focus on stateful systems, we work on virtual machines, but we still never want to do any in-place updates or any modifications after we've done the initial setup. We rather uh, prefer 
replacing an entire virtual machine in a case we need to do any system changes. And this allows us to know exactly what is running and where at all times. And this is super super useful when it comes to tracking, say, uh, which parts need patching, what, what which software we are running where, whether it's uh, statically or dynamically linked. Um, we also do reporting uh, from all of our, our virtual machines that report back uh, the the installed software versions, any changes to the uh, actual software that is installed or any changes on on the files on disk and this this serves us uh, really well in in being able to identify just in case there are any operator uh, created emergency patches for an acute issue so that we don't forget to return to the known baseline or but also kind of catch if in case there are any unauthorized access or unauthorized modifications to the running systems. That's what I had today. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope that I was able to share something interesting and, and hope you learned something new and useful from these experiences. Thank you.